on 29 July 2022. I published this circuit that worked very properly, by the way. It was tested over and over and it was a too hot motor temperature warning light. It only worked with a, a light emitting diode. I want to refer to the earlier video, but I got a question. Perhaps it's interesting to study uh, if you can, say, use this circuit to switch a computer ventilator of 12 volts on. And that computer ventilator 12 volt is here. So I developed this circuit, the second circuit, and that also works very good. I will give a demonstration. Of course, it's an analog circuit um, and with analog circuits we always have to do with, say, the biasing of transistors be it that transistor or the second transistor that uh, are in a certain way critical. That's important to tell. So by the biasing of a transistor, perhaps this is better visible, I hope that this is better visible, the biasing of a transistor is more or less critical where it starts to work, where it wants to work, etc, etc. And I saw uh, a few days ago uh, a video of All American 5 Radio, Richard, go to his uh, YouTube channel. And he has also discussed the biasing of a transistor. That's very, very important. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, with proper biasing, you can get, uh, say, almost everything working. And, of course, uh, that's not completely true. But anyway, let's look at this circuit. It is, in fact, completely simple analog circuit. I will pan over somewhat. It works, by the way, between 42 degrees and 60, uh, 42 degrees and 66 degrees Celsius. There are tables where you can convert Celsius uh, to Fahrenheit, etc., etc. And here is how the circuit works. Here is a diode. The diode is heated up. It's connected in a kind of Darlington circuit, not a completely pure Darlington circuit, but anyway, uh, this transistor has, of course, when it is activated, uh, needs only a tiny voltage drop change between its base and the positive lead and the tiny voltage drop is given by this diode. So when you apply heat to that diode it will give the effect that the Darlington switches and that switch moment the bias, the bias of that um, uh, switch circuit can be set with the 47k potentiometer. Here is a relay that I've used. This is the relay that I've used. It's a 12 volt relay. And here we have exactly the same uh, 12 volt relay. The resistance of such a relay is in the order of 270 ohms. Could be somewhat higher, somewhat lower, doesn't matter much. So it's a it's a relay that can, in a certain way, switch medium uh, currents. For higher currents, perhaps you need a typical 
a 12 volt automotive relay I don't think or I don't know and I don't think uh, that that will work so this is the these are the properties of the relay 12 volt 12 volt coil DC resistors approximately 270 ohms and I've used here by purpose a voltage stabilizer uh, perhaps that seems very strange but with a voltage stabilizer the effect will be that the switch moment say where the uh, transistor switches on or off is much more precise compared to a situation where we have here for instance a varying voltage between say 0 volt and 12 volt that depends on the load so when a load is switched on could be that the voltage between these two sensitive power lines uh, drops down to say 1 volt or 2 volt lower and that has surely an effect on how the circuit works. Pen over somewhat. P1 sets the the way that the circuit acts, and of course, it uh, how the circuit acts is only has only uh, a direct relation to how the diode here is mounted into the circuit. I've made a say a tiny piece of aluminium here that surrounds that diode so that means that the diode is heated via that piece of aluminium and you can surely see and I want to demonstrate it that the circuits the ventilator starts to work when the diode is heated I do that here. So let's heat up the diode. Switch off the lights by the way. That's perhaps important. Heat up the diode here with a flame. And when that now the fan starts to work and you heard you have heard the click of the relay. And let's see what happens. We have enough time. I have approximately 15 minutes. So now the diode cools down here. Let's see when the ventilator stops. Of course it will take some time. And I, I have of course, of course tested this etc etc in the meantime perhaps we can talk about the other properties of the circuit and here are more or less the test results of uh, The way that the uh, circuit acts, heat it up, and here you see the temperature where it now it, it's switched off. Here you see the temperature where it switches on, that is 60 C degrees Celsius, and it switches off on approximately 42. Uh, degrees Celsius so there's a kind of bandwidth where the temperature uh, circuit works and here again another result of the measurements and I've measured it the temperatures with this infrared thermometer very good um, 
uh, thermometer, by the way. I'm not advertising it, but anyway, it works very, very good. I bought it, say, approximately six months ago, and here you can see how it works. So, now at the moment we can, for instance, study how hot this piece of aluminium is that is connected to the diode. So, let's see. I have to point the... So, now it's, say, 35 degrees Celsius. And perhaps interesting to show when it's when the, uh, the unit starts again how hot that is. So here is the, the the lighter. I heat up the diode again. Heat it up again to give the diode the right temperature where it is able. Now the fan switch is on. What's the temperature? Always interesting. Of course, oh, that, was, that was not the meaning. And uh, here is my uh, temperature sensor. We read here now. Hundred and two degrees Celsius. Well, that's of course a very big value. Let's see when the ventilator switches off again. Of course, the diode here has to cool down, and with su such a gas flame, of course, it will heat up very, very substantially to a very high temperature. So, now we are on 58 degrees, it cools down very quick. And of course it has also to do with, say, the... now it stops. Let's see where it stops. It stops on approximately 43 degrees Celsius. So anyway, uh, the, the, the video, I don't want to make the video too long. I only have 15 minutes for every video that I make on YouTube. Thanks for watching. And well, the schematic again. As say the final part of the video. Very easy to make, and of course you can say think why? Why is there a, a 12 volt voltage regulator here? That has everything to do with the say precise setting regarding to the temperature of the diode. When the voltage varies here somewhat, the precise setting of such a diode circuit uh, will be kind of cumbersome. And all these components, by the way, are very cheap, apart from perhaps the relay. But perhaps I want to 
give attention to a circuit where a relay is no longer necessary. Thanks for watching.